Well, look at little Sally. Little Sally is hard at work trying to start her own business, aren't you, Sally? Well, Sally, you can't start your own business. Because, Sally, you're a woman. Oh! <laughs> well, look at little Johnny. Little Johnny is hard at work trying to start his own business, aren't you, Johnny? Well, good for you, Johnny. Best of luck. Thanks, cheesy narrator voice. You're welcome, Johnny. It looks like you could use some help. Let's get started in building your business empire. First, we have to set up your plant. No, not that kind of plant, Johnny, you boob. A plant is an establishment like a factory, farm, mine, store, or warehouse that performs one or more functions in fabricating and distributing goods and services. So what kind of plant do you want, Johnny? I want to be a lemon farmer. Lemon farming in Illinois during the winter. Hmm, good choice, Johnny. Johnny, you chose to work inside an industry that exists in a purely competitive market. ...involves a very large number of firms producing a standardized product. In Johnny's case, lemons. Firms can enter or exit the industry with ease. Here, I have a short-run competitive equilibrium graph. As you can see, the demand is perfectly elastic, and the firm will produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Neato! I'm going to farm the dandiest lemons around and charge a fortune for them. No, 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 Johnny. It doesn't work that way. As a pure competitor, you are a price taker. That means you don't get to set the, your own price. You have to adjust to the market price. You see, Johnny, to consumers, a lemon is a lemon. And if your competitors are all selling at 10 cents a lemon, no one would buy your lemons that are selling at a higher price. So, to maximize the profit, we can just sell as much as possible at the market price to make up for the fact that we can't set our own price. Spot on, Esther. Oh, Johnny, do you see those migrant Hispanic and women workers in your field? Well, just because they are of a lower social status doesn't mean that you can just not pay them. This is a valuable lesson. Labor services, materials, fuel, transportation services, and the like are all expenditures that you have to pay for. These are called explicit costs. Another type of cost would be implicit costs, like the opportunity costs of using your own self-employed, self-owned resources. Oh, shucks. I don't want to have to pay for that. While we're on the topic of costs, it's best that I just give it to you straight. There are more costs to running any type of business, like these. Let's take a look at fixed, variable, and total costs. Fixed costs are things like rental payments, interest on debt, and utilities such as water, gas, and electricity. These costs do not change no matter what the firm's output is. Variable costs depend on the firm's output level. For example, as the firm's output level increases, the variable costs also increase, and vice versa. And total cost is simply the sum of the fixed and total costs. Ah, uh, gee willikers. I don't want to have to spend all that money and not get to charge what I want. Well, let's take a look at another type of business model. The pure monopoly. Now that you have all these lemons from your lemon farm, and nobody else around has lemons because it's frickin' Illinois in the winter, you can start a lemonade stand. Hi, Johnny. It's nice to see you are so interested in economics. My name is Professor Party from Harvard. Gee willikers, you're from Harvard, neat oh. You betcha. Now, let me tell you a, a, a little bit more about pure monopolies. There are four significant factors. In a pure monopoly, there is a single seller. There are no close substitutes for the good. The monopolist is the price maker. And there is blocked entry for competitors. I'm having a hard time picturing all of this. What does it look like on a graph? So well, actually, it's a little more complicated than you think. Let's go take a look. Here we are at the graph, Johnny. Now, see, 
This line is our marginal revenue line. This line is our demand line. And this curve is our marginal cost curve. Now, we want the monopoly will want to produce at where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. But that's only our quantity produced. In order to find the price that the monopoly will charge for their product, they will take the same quantity and go all the way up to their demand curve, and then they will go all the way over, and that is the price that the monopoly will charge. Oh boy, that is so much fun! So now that you understand everything, let's make it more complicated. If you're a monopolist, you have the opportunity to take part in okay. price discrimination. And then, can I, I By golly, back? Professor, what is price discrimination? Well, Johnny, price discrimination is the selling of a product to different buyers at different prices when the price differences are not justified by differences in costs. That sure sounds interesting. Can anyone do that? Not quite. The seller must be a monopolist or possess some degree of monopoly power. They must be able to segregate buyers into distinct classes, each of which has a different willingness or ability to pay for the product. And the original purchaser cannot resell the product or service. That sure seems like a lot of work. What types of films are there? Well, let's go take a look at another type of film. There is another type of film quite similar to a pure competition. Monopolistic competition. Oh, what is that? Well, you see, a monopolistic competition is characterized by a relatively large number of sellers, differentiated products, and easy entry to and exit from the industry. Let's take a look at the graph. You see, this here is your demand line, but it's separated from your marginal revenue line. Your marginal cost line is still the same as ever. However, you once again produce at the quantity where MR equals MC, then you go up to demand again and go over for your price. This is your average total cost curve, and as you see, in the short run, this monopolistic competitor is making profits. So, what kind of firm would make this kind of cereal? Well, that takes us to our last type of firm, an oligopoly. An oligopoly is a market structure dominated by a few large producers of homogenous or differentiated products. Like these? <laughs> oh, Johnny, what are we going to do with you? No, an example of differentiated products would be Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Also, oligopolies ha have significant barriers to entry. The last main point of an oligopoly is that they are price makers, but have to exist in mutual interdependence. We show this mutual interdependence with what is known as the game theory. Like this? No. Damn it, Johnny. Oh, uh, well, anyways, if, for example, only you and Bobby were producing steel, well, you would both be oligopolies. And this would be how the game theory would, af would affect you. You see here, if you both went with high prices, you would both benefit and gain more revenue. But if you went with a low price where Bobby went for a high price, Bobby would get decreased revenue and you would experience increased revenue. Same for vice versa, and if you both went with low prices, you would both lose. So, if you could both uh, work together or collude, as it is, and work together and say you're going to both go with the high prices, you could both benefit. And that is how collusion benefits oligopolies. Well, gee, that sounds like a lot of information. Now let's see what type of firm he chose. I choose a monopoly! Wait, what's that, Lassie? Someone stole some of Johnny's lemons? Oh no! Looks like someone broke past the barriers of entry. But Johnny has a trick to keep out the competition. Oh, that Johnny! 
but Johnny has a trick to keep out the competition. <laughs> Nino, I'm gonna. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, to maximize the mark. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amanda. Remember that one time when we were all in here and you were out there? Do you remember that? <laughs> Hi everybody who's in here. Oh, but Amanda's out there. Oh, okay. No, I just put it So, what kind of firm would make this cereal? So, what kind of firm would make Willikers, I don't want to have to spend all that money and not get to change. Ah, <laughs> uh, gee Willikers, I don't want to have to spend all that money and not to get, get to charge what I Let's want. Let's take a look nope, at fixed variable and total cost. Fixed costs are things like rental payments, interest on debit. <laughs> Let's take a look at fixed variable and total cost. Fixed costs are things like rental payments, interest on debt, and utilities. <laughs> Take a look at fixed variable and total <laughs> 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 debt and utilities such as water, and gas, and electric. <laughs> These costs do not change. <laughs> I am going to take, take mix. <laughs> take five. <laughs> no. Just get. Let's take a look at fixed variable and total costs. Fixed are things like rental payments, interest on debt, and utilities such. <laughs> what did I fucking do now? <laughs> Let's take a look at. Fixed variable shit. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Amanda. <laughs> Let's take a look at fixed variable and total costs. Fixed costs are things like rental payments, interest on debt, and utilities. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we're doing. Uh, yeah, this is bad. Woo! Illegal things. Come look on, at, look at the illegal culprit yeah, right here. Woo! Woo! Yeah, woo! Hey, everybody! Hey, Hi, guys! Woo! Right. See you later! So, we got down to the end of the street. There's no field They're there. Not, they build a fence. Yeah, no. Wow. No field, yeah. just a no fence. Field. Just some leaves. Aren't those the soccer fields, anyway? Yeah. Look at that cool. black lady hanging out the car! Oh.